Well, good unboxing, yeah? It's already out of the box. Just didn't want to bore you. So this is a discontinued Tesla Powerwall inverter. Um, I'm going to try and make it work. I'm worried that it's supposed to communicate with the Tesla headquarters over the internet to actually make it work or something, but I'm going to see what I can do. You know, most inverters have a battery bank that's between 12 and 48 volts. So your wires are large. So you got your battery, you got, these are 12 volt batteries. So you hook them up four in series to make 48 volts. You got to use a big, big thick wire, even thicker than this sometimes if you're doing the lower voltages. Uh, copper's expensive. Um, what a pain in the ass. You got to run series, parallel, series, parallel, series, parallel, and then you got to try and make all the wires of the same length and all this bull crap. Well, guess what, man? This thing takes a high voltage battery. Right there. Maximum battery voltage, 570 volts. With the battery normally between 430 and 550 volts. So you just put all your 12 volt batteries in series, you get like maybe 30, 40 batteries, something like that in series. Um, no fuss, you can use tiny little wires, probably like 10 or 8 gauge. Uh, solar panels, same thing. It's got two MPPT charge controllers built into this inverter. And you can put in 500 volts from the solar panel. And look at that range. You get good range between 85 volts from the panels all the way up to 550. I, ass I assume that your panel voltage has to be um, higher to get better efficiency. I looked at the chart actually and it, it, was, it, was, it was pretty efficient no matter what voltage you used, but definitely better with the higher voltage. So this has got a maximum continuous power output of 6,000 watts. That is 240. So you only get 3,000 watts per leg. And on these solar panels, you've got solar panel 1 and 2 are combined together for a series string of 480 volts at 19 amps. And then you got input 2. In, no, sorry, one, 1 and 2 are separate, that's right. It's got four inputs, but um, two of them are combined. So you only get two charge controllers, but 19 amps apiece at 480 volts. I think that's around 5,000 watts each. Something I don't know, i got to do the math, but it's up there, probably around 7,000 watts solar capable. Um, it's grid tie, but we've got the battery back up too, and it has a cold start option, so if there's no grid, you can still turn it on and provide... AC power to your house. So, uh, I'm upside down down there. That kind of hurts. Okay, so, um, let's see this thing. Get it to focus. It's got four buttons, three lights. Pretty simple, huh? Uh, you cannot take this cover off until you turn these two switches off, and then you can, then you can lift it off. Look at that. Wow pretty simply laid out and this seal is great this is really soft really soft rubber and that ridge pushes up in the rubber and it's smooth too nice and machined so there's not going to be any leaks It's got a 9-volt battery, huh? Lithium 9-volt battery in there. Keep its memory or something. So here's your solar panel string 1 input. And if you have an exact duplicate string, you can put it in right here and they'll, they'll help each other. And then your MPPT charge controller number 2 is here. You can have two strings of solar panels as well on that one. So this board, it's got shielding and an antenna output here. So this 
the little antenna port. Oh, that's good. This this jack's labeled public. This one's labeled private. Got the fireman switch, which has a jumper in it right now. The CAN bus communication, high and low here. Got a couple auxiliaries. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do. Apparently, this antenna communicates over Zigbee to Tesla somehow. I guess. AC in here. How does that work? It looks kind of just like you just push them in. It looks just like you push it in and it locks it. Maybe you had to stick a stick in this little holder release. Maybe super fast. Wow. I have no idea what backup lines mean. Is that output? I guess this would be output and this would be input. Yeah, because battery connects here, solar panels here. Yeah, so that's going to be in and out. So this is the AC bypass switch and it looks like it's doing a lot. It's connecting and disconnecting a lot of stuff. I think it's just jumping your input over to your output all with one turn. That's what it looks like. Bypass or not bypass. I don't know what INV stands for. And over here is the DC disconnect. So that's this one. I think that switch is literally disconnecting everything. All the solar panels and the battery with one throw of one switch. You can also make a remote switch apparently through the uh, through the fireman cable. There's a little fan here. It's kind of a thick and beefy looking thing. And this port goes up into the other cavity. They're two separate pieces of metal, but they're they're bolted together, real solid. There's probably some kind of a gasket in here. Don't expect there's going to be any water leaks there. Looks really well made. It's kind of heavy. Take show you the back here, the heat sinks. So it's gotten just natural convection that flows up through here. No cooling fans to go bad. There is that one little one inside there, but I don't think that does anything major. Maybe just provide some circulation for keeping the humidity under control or something. So it's got a bracket. You attach the bracket to the wall. This thing hangs on the bracket. Came with some uh, instructions. That is one huge piece of paper. Wish me luck. These batteries are rated at a thousand volts, so I can put them up to 400, no problem. I have got about 2,000 watts of panels up there on the roof right now coming down so that's 2,000 watts coming through these two little wires two simple wires how easy I'm gonna mount that thing here somewhere apparently it communicates through the CAN bus to the battery they kind of do a digital handshake and they say hey are you ready to turn on I'm ready to turn on and then they both turn on at the same time so you know I don't know these batteries do have CAN bus communications through the um, through the uh, BMS there's the BMS so this will connect connect the relays and the precharge resistors and do all that when it's commanded to or when I put power to I think it was this wire well, if I put 12 volts to this one, then it'll it'll turn on. And when the relays get connected, boom, 
batteries get connected. <laughs> Look at how tiny those wires are. Oh my gosh. I swear that's like maybe maybe you could fit an 8 gauge in there. 8 or 10. I cannot believe that's supposed to put through 6000 watts. That is awesome. This is the future, guys. Tesla is like, hey, we're not messing around. <laughs> so I unscrewed one of the plugs. Nice, smooth surface so you can put conduit up here. You could even do some waterproof conduit in, in that. What is this thing? Nothing, apparently. It says can high. Oh, that's, that's, a, that's where the communication wire is supposed to come out. Got the battery monitor here. It shows the, the cell block voltages, state of charge, how many watts have moved through the battery. Shows how many times it's been under and over voltage, what its maximum uh, charge, that's 280 amps uh, discharge, maximum discharge and maximum charge, 180 amps. That's a lot of amperage for one 12 volt battery. That's all they are. It's group 27. They're about 40 pounds. And they hold 1.7 kilowatt hours. They are so much better than lead acid. I just can't even say. Here's my little testing station. Got a shunt there. This one's currently at 42%. I just turned the charger off. Shows you all the info. And this display is actually wireless. You feed it power and it it communicates somehow with the with the shunt through the wireless. And then I got the battery uh, capacity tester there. Kind of a chintzy thing, but it's accurate and does its job. Big mess of wires. Sears die hard. Of course, always with a bad cooling fan, right? cooling fan it will not work on that thing so as long as I leave the lid off it doesn't overheat if I leave it on 12 amps so wish me luck I am going to try and make this thing handshake with the valence batteries and actually work off grid no grid tie well maybe I'll grid tie just for experiment there's the grid right there but no real need to do that I need to get this um, to my my off-grid place. You might ask what that is. That's the antenna for the Zigbee thing or Wi-Fi or whatever it is.